filling their lungs. Unfortunately, their struggle was music to the ears of predators like me, some of whom had already begun to feast. I held back for as long as I could, but finally my animalistic nature took hold of my very core and I began to tenderize warm, dark meat between my giant teeth. Tears that I didn't even know I had began to mix and mingle with blood and sea. I, I am a creature that many think of as a mindless killing machine, but on that day after gorging, I lay fat and tired and disgusted with myself, with just enough energy to wonder how that ship's crew would attempt to justify their own actions. I was and will forever be totally disheartened by your crew's humanity. Mm. You good? You want to do another one? Um, it's up to you. I think that was good to close on. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> So I got a few more announcements before we do the open mic. If you want to sign up for the, the recorded open mic, get over to it now. Or if you want to not be recorded, but you still want to do open mic, do that. January 19th, I'm sure you're wondering why I'm holding this three pounds of wood pencil. But uh, January 19th is As to Loot, our first sword fight tournament. Uh, there are cash prizes, and the winner gets this pencil, which they'll hopefully be able to defend at later sword fight events. Um, November 9th. If the theme for that event is hunger, and we're having a food drive that night. So bring in a can of food, and you get a copy of the release we're going to make that night. Um, all of the food and money we get from that night will go towards the Canton Sunday picnic to help feed homeless people downtown. Again, we are hungry people, not, not hungry, homeless. hungry people, homeless, hungry. Um, we are looking for features for that night. Uh, so if you want a feature, if you want a sword fight, that'd be great. December 14th, the theme is Will It Snow? And we're having a clothing drive. Uh, weather appropriate clothing, you uh, can donate them here. We don't have a release scheduled for that, but, you know, bring clothes in because we're going to give it to the Domestic Violence Project. Um, weather appropriate, obviously, don't bring your shorts in. Bring, you know, bring coats, bring hats, gloves, etc. We're still looking for features for that one as well, uh, and sword fighters. Um, and that's it for the announcements. Um, we're going to start the recorded. Do you have something to say? Uh, vote for the art call before you guys go. Yes, vote for, the yes. Art, vote for the art call. Um, you can talk to Mike about more of the, uh, the details associated with that. Um, I'm going to go grab the list. I know Daria is number one on the list, so please welcome Daria. I'm having the king of bad coordination days. Ready, ready for you. Hollywood rape culture, a branch of the patriarchy that makes our bodies into commodities to be assumed and consumed by those with the money to spend and the stroke to make things happen. Nudity on the big screen at age 19 in order to assure that you're still going to work at 24. A quick bit of dick with the producer on his casting couch. Maybe if you're good, he'll put in a good word, assure you a career well into your 30s provided you can keep yourself looking good and thin and willing to fuck the producers again and again. No was never a barrier for you. Yes was only a key to the gate for us. And once you were finished taking what you wanted, you only let us through the gate if you liked the way we fucked. We never had a position to negotiate from that was suck my cock or never work in this town again. The system rigged by you and your dude bro conspirators vying for prime pussy real estate getting in on the ground floor. 
you stake your claim on women as if you, they were the new world and you were Christopher Columbus. Plant your flag on this pussy that was never yours to claim. You exploit and manipulate and cajole and destroy, and we call this concept rape culture, but you call it business as usual. The environment fostered by your self-declared entitlement to our bodies puts us on this casting couch within your feet and fingers reach, forced to place a price on our bodies and souls to appease your greasy, creeping fingers, or go back home and wait tables at a diner where the, where the patrons all grab at your ass. Hollywood is just an exaggerated example of the same sexist system found in more subtle ways outside of it. Advancement comes to those with open legs for easy legs. This is not the price for work that anyone should be forced to pay. Yet this is the gate you place before us to earn a living wage. My body will never belong to you or any other man, for I am not property. You will not be allowed to take me by force, tax-free, to raise a flag or plant a tree. I reject your claim as the natives rejected Columbus. I reject your gospel as a heretic rejects Jesus Christ. Keep your dick pics and your indecent, indecent proposals. I will forge my own way. I would rather fail on my own than be your successful little fuck toy. This last one was written, um, we've uh, had, had some other unfortunate uh, recent events concerning certain appointments made by our guy that lives in the White House now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now we have a dude bro frat guy as a judge and we're kind of screwed mm -hmm. and it kind of dug up some things. I was, um, this isn't actually related to that, but I was raped in 2001. And this is the first time I've ever actually used that word to describe what happened to me. And I don't know why I shared that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I am somewhat fortunate, I guess, as a trans woman that doesn't look like a trans woman, that I can kind of just put my headphones on and disappear in public. But that's not always going to be the case for me. And this is a poem about that realization. Riding on a bus with the headphones on, I don't appear to be feminine, so people usually let, leave me alone. I've managed to go a very long time without being physically attacked. High school is the last time I remember anything like that. Still, the reality of being perceived as feminine in public comes with risks. Risks I can seemingly mitigate by appearing less feminine. But I wouldn't call this presentation masculine. It gives the power to a false idea that masculine presentation is, default, is a default setting. There's nothing inherently masculine about a hoodie and sweatpants. More women than men I know wear this stuff anyway. Men wear shorts or jeans or slacks. Women wear sweats and yoga pants, unless you're me, then hopefully you're just invisible. Because I know this won't last. The only reason I haven't been attacked since my tra transition began is because I'm not, not enough time has passed. This illusion of masculinity doesn't really protect me. It only exists as a deterrent, something I do for peace of mind. One of these days, I'm going to get attacked. It's not going to matter what I look like or how I dress. I can dress in a way that makes me feel less likely to be targeted, but I will be targeted. Whether it's by a man who wants to assert his power over a woman, or from a bigot who thinks he knows my gender better than I do. It could be a sex crime, a hate crime, maybe even both. I might survive the experience, or maybe I could die. Every time I step outside of my house, I'm at risk. Even if all I'm doing is riding on the bus with headphones on. Mm -hmm. And the other person on the recorded open mic, please welcome Keith Allison. <laughs> Dogs are delicious. Don't judge what I eat. They're loaded with protein from their cute heads to their feet. Animals are intended for us to eat. If they weren't, then why are they made of meat? Don't get all sappy. They were humanely raised. They were loved and cared for before being broiled and braised. It's tradition. We've done it for hundreds of years. So leave me alone with your pathetic tears. Oops, did I say dogs? Cows. I meant, 
and somehow you no longer offer lament. Mm. Thank you. This is called Instant Nutrition Expert. <laughs> <laughs> and the vegans know where this is going. Yeah. It's a common known fact that when a Big Mac, Biggie Fry, milkshake eating motherfucker finds a vegan, they are suddenly awarded a degree in nutrition. <laughs> they shout protein like a Tret syndrome tick, like they had any idea of the USDA recommended level. Like they ever gave it a single thought beyond an excuse to pop one more cheeseburger into their open mouth until they met me. Oblivious to the protein in every single vegetable on the planet and not seed, grain, and legume. Oblivious to the saturated fat and cholesterol in every single animal planet driving the leading cause of death in America. You need milk. Oblivious to the reality that minerals, such as calcium, literally come from the ground. You need meat to live. Oblivious to the fact that I'm alive. Mm. Mm. Then the last one I'll read you, this is uh, written as in the style of a children's poem. And this was me actually doing a lot of research at the beginning. There's a pretty normal path for a child who is taught to eat meat, as most of our children are, before we have any clue what we're eating. We're eating bacon before we have any clue it's a pig being cut up and served to us, or burger before we know it's a cow. And there's, there are youth or Yahoo pages and things and uh, chat group pages saying, what do I do? My kid's freaking out. What can I tell them to keep them eating meat? And so this is a response to the things we say to get children to go against their genuine compassion when they don't want to eat animals and start not wanting to eat them. It's called Farm Fresh Fairy Tales. No, no, sweetie, don't you cry. That little piggy wanted to die. Bacon is so good and yummy. Don't you want more in your tummy? Eating meat makes you strong and big. Don't cry over a dirty pig. She gives us milk, that sweet old cow. Her baby doesn't need it now. Her udders are so big and full. She's thankful when we start to pull. Old McDonald's farm has only happy cows. They smile and laugh all day, singing to the sows. When the butcher comes, they hope it is their turn. Being on your plate, an honor for which they yearn. There was no pain, it didn't suffer. We needed it to be our supper. Chicken meat is so humane, especially with that tiny brain. Eat a nugget, get a toy, a happy meal for a girl or boy. Beef, it's what's for dinner. We need protein, you know. And make sure you've got milk, it helps the body grow. Eating lots of meat, the only way to grow. E-I-E-I, -E -I, oh no, that simply isn't so. Eggplant, beans, and broccoli, lentils, flaxseed, too, apricots, and strawberries, they are so good for you. Everything you need grows up from the ground, fruits and veggies big and long, or even small and round. Pigs are social creatures, loving of their young. They like to play and use the mud to protect them from the sun. With an oink oink here and an oink oink there, the boiling vats of water will help remove their hair. Chickens are inquisitive and very, very bright warming up their babies in their eggs at night. With a cluck cluck here and a cluck cluck there, a male inside a hatchery doesn't have a prayer. Cattle are so sweet and kind, and more peaceful creatures hard to find. With a moo moo here and a moo moo there, watch them bleed and thrash around while hanging in the air. There are no it's, just like me, that animal is a he or she. We don't need to eat them, that story isn't so. We can live and let live, E-I-E-I-O. Mm. All right, last call for the recorded open mic. Okay, will you? Bye, everyone on Facebook Live. Bye. Bye. Cool. All right, so we have one person on the not recorded open mic.